Good morning, students. Welcome to Real Analysis Live Lectures. The last lecture we have seen when a metric space is complete. So, in this lecture, we will discuss about completion of a metric space. Even if given metric space is not complete, we can how we can make a find a completion of that metric space. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let's start with definitions. Uh, of a isometry even though we might have re uh, discussed this earlier but let's recall this a map f maps from m to n is called an isometry if it preserves the distance that means uh, you take f of the images d of x comma uh, say, say here it is um, just a second so <clears throat> you take two elements in m so therefore d of x comma y is same as you take their images which is f of x and f of y uh, in n the distance is rho so if this is true for every x in and y in m then we say that it is an isometry okay so distance are preserved under this map you can easily check that every isometry is continuous by simply taking delta as given epsilon now we uh, define what is meant by completion. Let M comma D be a metric space. We say that M cap and D cap is a completion of M comma D. So this is a completion of M comma M D. If first of all this whatever we are talking about it should be a complete metric space. Okay, means every Cauchy sequence should converge there and m comma d should be isomorphic to some dense subset of this m cap that means there exists an isometry from m to m cap okay such that f of m as a subset of m cap should be dense is dense in m cap then we say that it is a completion so if you observe if m comma d is already a complete metric space then m cap is same as m okay that is not at all a difficult right so if at all that is not a complete metric space then we can have a complete metric space uh, which is nothing but the completion of that m okay uh, if you see quickly an example example if you take q we know that q is not complete we have seen that not every Cauchy sequence converges here but we can find uh, completion of Q. So we can easily see that R is a completion of Q. Why? As far as this definition is concerned, we require, we know that R is because the answer is R is already complete. And you can have a map from Q to R, simply the inclusion map. Okay. So Q sits inside Q only under this map. Okay, but we know a Q is dense in R, right? So it satisfies these two properties. So therefore, R is a completion of Q. Okay, fine. Now, uh, this lecture, we are trying to show that if any metric space, if you take M is any metric space, then we our aim is to show that this M has a completion. And not only it has a completion, we show that if at all any two completions are there for a given metric space M, then they are isometric. Okay. Okay. So, <coughs> how we will do that? You start with a metric space M, comma D, then uh, denote a note, uh, say, consider the set L infinity of M, just a notation. Huh? So, what we are considering is that F maps from M to R. So, this L infinity M is nothing but all real valued functions defined on R which are bounded. Okay, so F is consider all bounded functions defined on. A real valued bounded functions defined on M. Then we can define a norm on this L infinity 
So you can define num as because this f are all bounded, so you find supremum of mod f of x, x is in m. And this makes sense because f is bounded, so mod f of x is less than or equal to some given number. So supremum always exists. Okay. Then this with respect to this, so L infinity and this num is a complete metric uh, num linear space. Okay, so you can check that. Uh, so why we require this? With this, we take this help of this L infinity uh, for our metric space. So take any our given metric space M comma D, then this M is isometric to a subset of L infinity M. Okay, so uh, what is that subset is we'll define the following um, fix any point in that matrix space then for every x in m for every x in m we define fx is a map from m to r by fx of if you take any t then we can define this as distance between x comma t minus distance between a comma t basically that will be a real number okay now we can show that this fx actually is a belongs to this l infinity m so our claim is this fx belongs to l infinity m that means it we want to show that it is actually a bounded one so that is very easy if you find modulus of x fx of t then by distance uh, using that triangle inequality is less than or equal to d of x comma e so if you see left hand side it is depending on t but on the other right hand side it is not depending so you can say it is a, some constant c for every t so what we are proved actually is that fx of t is less than or equal to c for every t in m that shows that this fx is a bounded function so therefore it belongs to l infinity m right Therefore, now we can define a map phi from M to S, where what is this set S? Is for every X in M, we have Fx from M to R, which we know is a bounded, so it is a subset of L infinity of L infinity M. Okay, so simply send X to Fx. And you can check that this map is an isometry. Okay, so that means it preserves the distance so how num is defined on f l infinity m this fx minus fy infinity okay this is what we know is supremum of mod fx t minus fy t so we'll try to find the value of this and we'll find the supremum if you simplify fx t minus fy t by simply substituting those values and uh, this will get cancelled right so therefore what you have here by again by uh, tri triangle inequality this is less than or equal to dx comma y now in particular when you substitute at t is equal to x what we get here is this will be zero so what you have here is dx comma y right so it is less than or equal to dx comma y for every t and at t is equal to x it is this value so therefore supremum is nothing but this one right so supremum is distance between x comma y so therefore norm of so what we have proved is that norm fx minus fy is d of x comma y but this is same as norm phi of x minus phi of y okay is d of x comma y right that shows that this phi whatever we have defined is an isometric from m to s right that means this m is isomorph isomorphic to or isometric to a subset of l infinity m okay <clears throat> right now uh, with this we uh, by above result we can ready to show that every metric space has a completion so every metric space has a completion uh, what is that so you consider this set s whichever earlier we have defined fx from m to r is bounded for x in m Okay, for every x in m we have fx which is bounded so obviously it is a subset of l infinity m so this is a subset of l infinity m uh, then if you take its closure obviously it is a closed subset and closed subset of l infinity m uh, which we have know that this is complete 
this L infinity M is complete, this implies S bar is also complete. Okay, and hence S bar is complete. Therefore, we can define phi a map phi from M to this S bar, which is a complete metric space. Okay, uh, how we are defining simply phi of x as fx. Okay, then phi of m is obviously s and closure of this one is s bar right that shows that this phi of m is dense right and hence s bar this s bar whatever we are talking about is a completion of this given metric space m right now so as i said in the beginning uh, we so what we have seen so far is that if m is any metric space then M cap you can have always there exists a completion. Completion of M. How we constructed using this L infinity M. Next, what we'll see is uh, there's a next result we'll prove that if M1 and M2 are two completions of given metric space M, then M1 and M2 are isometric. M1 and M2, there will be an distance preserving map between m1 and m2 how we can prove that is the following so <laughs> we'll use the fact that m1 is a completion of m what is the meaning of saying this m1 is complete this implies m1 is complete and there exists a map f from m to m1 such that f of m such that f of m is dense in m1 similarly similarly m2 is a completion of our given metric space m so this implies again m2 is complete and there exists a map isometry so this is an isometry okay you can write it here isometry so there exists an isometry g from M to M2 such that such that G of M is dense in M2 okay now what we want to prove uh, we want to show that so our aim because we should know what we are going to prove then result follows we want to show that M1 and M2 are isometric so that means we have to somehow define a map you can call it phi or psi whatever from M1 to M2, which is an isometric, right? So somehow we have to take an element from M1 and we have to define in such a way that it belongs to M2, right? <clears throat> okay. So for that, start with, okay, so let X belongs to M1. Then how we can proceed? Because this M1 is... <coughs> in this m1 is complete and f of m is dense so if you consider this f of m is dense in m1 right so so as you see if f of, uh, as f of m is dense in m1 there exists x2 right such that f of xn converges to x okay so here let me write clearly so you have a map f is from m to m1 okay so you have x here okay x is in m1 and what we have here is f of m is dense in m1 so what is meant by saying that f of m is dense in m1 given any point x in m1 there exists a sequence from this subset which converges to that that means there exists a sequence xn in m such that this one so any element here it look like f of that right so f of xn converges to that x and that is what we have written here right now because this xn is in m xn is in m i can talk about g of so <clears throat> g is a map from m to m to Okay, so that means g of xn belongs to this m2. Okay, 
and we know m2 is a complete metric space so if at all you, we have this g of xn is cauchy then it converges so we get some element uh, that is m2 right so what we are going to show is that this will show that claim is this g of xn is a cauchy sequence okay uh, using the fact that because this f of xn converges so it is cauchy and so on in m1 that we will use somewhere so to find the cauchy sequence so in distance so you, you call it d2 g of xn g of xm it is because g is an isometry this is same as d of xn comma xm we are using the isometry definition there but again f is isometry this is same as d of f of xn and f of xm okay right <coughs> right now because our f is converges so therefore it is cauchy sequence right that shows that so whenever this is less than epsilon this is also less than epsilon so f of xn is cauchy implies and their distance is same so g of xn is also cauchy right now using the fact that m is m2 is complete and g of x n is a sequence in m2 so g of xn converges so you can call it say g of xn converges to y where y belongs to m2 so now if you go here where we started with we started with x in m1 and now we got an element y in m2 where what are the relations what are all the relations there exists a sequence in x sequence xn converging such that f of xn converging to x and g of xn converging to y and this is the relation so therefore we can send this x to this y so we are now in ready to define so we can define a map uh, this where is it yeah okay this we can define psi okay so psi is a map from m1 to m2 how you can define as psi of you send simply this x to y but what are this x and y how they are related where uh, we have a sequence xn which such that f of xn converges to x and g of xn converges to y so there is a sequence xn convert such that under f converges to x under g it converges to y and we are sending that x to y now we can show that this claim is psi is an isometry that means it preserves distance and it is not at all difficult one what we want to show that is same as saying that um, here whatever m1 with d1 right so you take x1 x1 and x2 in m1 we have to take okay then distance here is same as psi of those values okay but x1 x2 are in m1 that means uh, we have there exists a sequence xn xn prime okay in m such that and of course y uh, y1 and y2 in m2 right <clears throat> such that what we know is this psi of x1 is y1 psi of x2 is y2 and this f of xn converges to x1 f of xn prime converges to x2 g of xn converges to y1 and g of xn prime converges to y2 this much information we have right okay now you can check that uh, as this f of xn converges to x1 and f of x2 converges to x2 so therefore and with respect to d1 so d1 of f of xn and f of xn prime this converges to okay um, that means limit and then into infinity converges to d of x n uh, this x1 comma x2 okay 
right but this we can write as because using the fact that f is isometry this is same as d of xn xn prime okay but again using the fact that g is uh, isometry so this is same as limit ended into infinity so this is d2 of g of xn okay and g of xn prime but here where g of xn converging to y1 and y2 so therefore this is same as d of y1 okay uh, this is same as d2 of y1 y2 okay <clears throat> where y1 and y2 are in m2 right that shows that so whatever we have here uh, if you want you can write here d1 right okay so we shown that this psi because y y1 this is same as um this y1 y1 we have how we have written y1 we have written as psi of x1 okay so psi of x1 and psi of x2 okay right so there that shows that this whatever is an isometric right so therefore m1 and m2 are isometric right <laughs> So what are all we have uh, seen in this uh, so far is that if M is any metric space, then what we have proved is that uh, every metric space, every metric space has completion. And second one, uh, any two completions. of a metric space particular metric space m are isometric okay <laughs> so what we have used mainly that uh, we have tried to define what is this l infinity m and we try to define what is norm there and using this completeness and so on we have derived all these things okay next class what we will uh, discuss is about uh, interesting concept called compactness of a metric space that we will see in next class. Okay.